So in this video, I wanted to take a moment to talk about a new metering option that was added. This wasn't actually added in 6.5. This was actually added in version 6.2 of Studio One. But it really comes into play when we talk about working with surround formats in Immersive. So I did want to dive into this. That being said, in this part of this video, I'm actually working with Studio One 6.2 or 6.2.1 because I wanna show this with mono and stereo tracks first before we go to surround panners, because it can get a little bit confusing. So if we right click in our track, notice we have pre-fader metering, post-fader metering, and we have post-panner metering. So if you're looking at anything from version 6.1.2 and before, if you right click, you would only see the option to basically enable pre-fader metering, meaning that by default, Studio One was running in post-fader metering mode. Now, let's take a look at pre-fader metering. So I'm gonna right click and we can click, choose this pre-fader metering option. And also worth noting that to the best of my understanding, this is completely global. So we only have one choice. We can't have tracks being in different metering modes. So if we pull both of these faders down and I press play, notice that we have some signal that I've rendered here on these tracks. This is showing up and this is being displayed regardless of whether what our level is on our fader that we're not seeing any difference in terms of the level. Now, if I use something like, for example, trim, I could either trim this up or down, or I used something like event gain right over here, notice that this is affecting the level that it's getting sent pre-fader. So we are seeing that change. Also, if I was to crank this up, you'll notice that in this area, the level jumps up. So that is pre-fader metering. And in general, I think it's a great mode to use, especially when you're mixing, because you can see which tracks have audio on them even if you're not looking at your screen, if I'm looking at my fader port, for example, and I'm monitoring the levels, then I can build a mix bit by bit. So I'll start with something where I see the meter, I'll pull that fader up, and then a little bit later, I'll see another meter jumping, and I'll say, okay, what's that? And then I'll push that up. It allows you to work in a pretty good way. Um, but post-fader metering also has its benefits. So for example, let's switch over to post-fader metering. And also one thing I do wanna mention with pre-fader is that if you have plugins in the chain, and those plugins are affecting the gain in one way or another, that will change the level that is going in pre-fader. So you're obviously going to see those be updated as well. Let's disable this compressor for a moment. Okay, now I'm going to switch to post-fader metering. Now in this case, as I increase or decrease my fader, notice that the level meter jumps off or jumps up, and this will constantly be adjusting itself based on the gain that the track is outputting to the channel. And this metering mode makes sense for the most part. For example, if I turn this up just a little bit, I only see a little bit of signal here. I think this is a good mode and it's kind of like the least confusing mode, but it does have its drawbacks, I suppose. The one thing that I mentioned with respect to mixing, this makes this mode a little bit, not difficult to use, but maybe if you're brand new to, if you're opening up a song and you're mixing it, the pre-fader metering option where you see where there's level, so you can kind of jump around and get your bearings pretty quickly, especially if your track heights are super small and you can't even see the waveform overviews. You can see everything that's in the console, regardless of what is happening. I know that there's signal there, so I might know to increase that fader. Okay, now I wanna talk about how panning comes into play for this. This gets a little bit confusing, but let's, let's try to break this down. If we talk about a mono audio track going to a stereo output, which is what 100% of us are used to working with Studio One, everything up to version 6.5, then we basically had a couple different options. So for example, you could have a mono track right over here, and then we have our mono panner that's going out to stereo, which is just a, a balanced perspective. If we're in any of these modes over here, I can't see anything in terms of how this changes things in relation to the panning, right? And that goes for both the pre-fader mode and the post-fader mode. Now that is on a mono track that's going to a stereo output, but let's take a look at a stereo track for a moment. Let's go to pre-fader metering. I have this set up as a balance slider for now. You could do this with dual or balance. I'm just gonna set this to balance just for sake of demonstration. If I pan all the way to the left or all the way to the right, I don't see any of that information, whether I'm in pre-fader or whether I'm in post-fader. I can't see any of this. Now, if I was to momentarily bring in my main output over here. Let's go to pre-fader metering. Notice that it does display over here. And this is kind of like one of the ways, one of the reasons that I stay or stayed in pre-fader metering so much is that if I needed to solo a track and I was changing the stereo perspective 
Or if ever I needed to monitor what was happening in the stereo perspective with a couple different tracks, I could always just take a glance at my main outs and I could see what's happening with my left and right output just by adjusting things like this. Let's mute this track for a moment and we could see the adjustments or what's happening here in terms of my main outs if I take a look at that actual level that's being outputted. Okay, so now let's hop over to the post panner metering. So in this case, I'm going to make an adjustment with my panning. Actually, you know what? I will also switch over to the dual and I'll just do it this way. If I make any adjustments with post panner meeting, metering happening, notice that we see it in here on the actual console. And also in addition to being post panner, it's obviously post fader as well. Now, if I switch back momentarily, let's put this to zero. If I switch back momentarily to pre fader, Notice that we don't have any panning information in terms of what we're metering. We see them at the exact same stage. So this is useful. This is an added benefit. And in fact, I would say that for the most part, if you wanted to use post fader metering, I think for the most part that it makes sense that you'd also want to use post panner metering, especially if you're making any adjustments to your panner. That being said, I also want to show you a trick that you can do when using pre fader metering. If you use the splitter, and you go into the channel split mode, a lot of the times if I was doing any panning, if I wanted to rebalance the stereo signal, I would actually use the splitter. And what that would do is that would give me the benefit of, of adjusting the left and right balance or perspective, if you will, in the splitter. And this is actually happening pre-fader. So it, because it's happening pre-fader, I can see this information in the actual panning, even if I'm in pre-fader mode. So if I hold this down, it doesn't matter. I, I could still see this information. Okay, so that I, I feel like that covers the basics when we're working with tracks that go from the same channel format to the same output format. But now let's take a look again at this one over here. Let's start with pre-fader metering mode. We'll pull this all the way down. In pre-fader, obviously we don't see anything. And in post-fader, obviously we see difference of the levels. And then now let's switch over to post panner metering. But I want you to take a look at this track, the actual track format. This is a mono track. So now if I switch over to post panner, notice that now because we're in post panner and because this mono track is being sent out to a stereo output, this actually changes the, the actual amount of meters that we see. So this in itself is both useful, but it can be confusing. It's useful because if I have a mono track that's going to a stereo output or potentially even a 7.1.4 output, I would want to see how anything I'm doing with the panner is affecting this track without necessarily having to look at my main outs. The reason I say that it might be a little bit confusing is because at the end of the day, it's still a mono track. And a great example of that would be if I wanted to use a mono input to record a track, but I wanted to use actual stereo plugins, then I would just change this to stereo, and I'm going to see these meters regardless of which, uh, which metering mode that I'm using. But if it's in mono, and we see those two meters, it might be confusing to just that you're not really realizing that it is actually a mono track. Okay. And then, of course, when we're in mono, this is the other thing. When we're in mono, when we adjust the panning of a mono track, we are getting information that is both post fader and post panner so that I, I know exactly what's happening at any given point in time. But it does change the actual meter. So this is in context with version 6.2.1 is what I'm using in this. But now let's take this into the surround format and the immersive format. So I'm going to switch over to Studio One version 6.5. I have the exact same track formats set up over here, but in this case, instead of having mono and stereo tracks that are routed to a stereo output, notice that we're actually routed to a 7.1.2 bed, right? So if we take a look at the same example, let's start off with our pre-fader metering. This one over here, we have our tone. I don't actually need to hear this tone. Let's actually kill it on the headphones, which is what I'm recording. And then if I make any adjustments here, it doesn't change because we're in pre-fader mode. If I go into post-fader mode, it's the exact same thing. And I got to make sure that this is loop enabled. So we'll loop enable this and we'll make sure that that's active. It's the exact same thing. We're going to see the difference between the actual level. But now let's go into post-panner metering and take a look at what happens here. 
I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this a little bit, but we're essentially seeing now one meter. Now also with respect to the panner mode, this is a mono track by default. This We want this to make sure that we're going out to the left and right. We have to disable the center and now this is being output to the left and right. So now let's adjust this and take a look at what's happening here. If I adjust, as long as I don't pass into this, the, the bounds of the left and right speaker, we're just adjusting the balance the same way we were in the stereo perspective. But we're actually seeing this now in the post panner and we don't necessarily need to look at the main outs. So that in itself is useful. Now, if I go to the stereo track over here and we do the exact same thing, this is a stereo track over here, and this is being routed to the same 7.1.2 bed. If I adjust anything from within the stereo track in terms of the panning, so if I was to, I gotta make sure, I'm gonna close the spread a little bit, and let's also disable the center. And if I was to do, let's say this here, notice that it's just shifting, it's just shifting the perspective over here, but we don't see anything here. But if I go into post panner, now we can see that that perspective shift. I would have to zoom in though quite a bit in order for you to see this either on the main outs, but that's why I have the level meter open. Let's close the spread even a little bit more and let's adjust this perspective over here. And we're just doing it just like this. Now you can see that this change and because we have post panner metering open, we are able to see that. Now I think this is good for a couple reasons. First of all, um, it, it allows you to see without necessarily looking at a level meter or without necessarily having a panner open, if I was to make some adjustments on this and I didn't want to have all these metering options open, then essentially all I really need to do is come into post panner mode. And then even with the micro panner open and the level meter closed, as long as I'm in post panner mode, if I now like spill this into the other speakers, I can see exactly what's happening. I can see it on the source track itself. I don't even have to look at this or I don't even have to look at the bed. If I was in either pre-fader mode, I'll see the track locked to the channel width that it was recorded. Or in post-fader mode, it's going to be locked to that channel width. I don't see any information that's relevant to the panning. But the minute we hop into post-panner mode, even though this is a stereo track, we see all the information and how this stereo track with the post-panner information that I've set up will be outputting to all those different outputs. So anyways, that is post-panner metering. Definitely a welcomed addition. Once you understand it, and you get past the differences between all three modes, it's definitely something that you'd want to be toggling to in very specific cases. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you for more in the next one. Cheers.